the Gryphon Books Science Fiction Rediscovery Series. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and this time we're going to take a look at a series of science fiction books that I published. Um, the trade paperbacks, they were published from 1995 to 2014, so almost, almost 20 years, 62 books in the series. And here's almost all of them now, except there's just one missing that I can't find, but I've got it somewhere here in the house someplace, but I don't know where. And I was looking to find all the books are numbered. And um, actually, I was lucky to find an old Gryphon Books catalog. And this is actually the thing that I, used to, that I would print the catalog from. But it lists almost all the books in the series. So I was, that was actually very useful. This is a 2007 catalog, which uh, gave me a lot of information about a lot of the books because I just can't remember all of it. There's so many books over tw over 20 years. I, I published this science fiction series along with many other Gryphon books, uh, Gryphon crime books, um, uh, as well as uh, research and uh, nonfiction books, books on Sherlock Holmes, hard-boiled crime, a whole lot of stuff, even Westerns. So there's just uh, so much stuff that I was publishing, but this, is really, this time we're just going to take a look at the science fiction rediscovery series. And how did this series come about? Uh, I'm just going to hold this here. It came about, actually, started out when a book dealer, uh, John White, who was a friend of mine many years ago, sold me four books in the uh, Clay Drew series. And um, these are the four books. They're incredibly rare. They're British science fiction from the 50s. Warrior of Mars, I mean um, Emperor of Mars, that's the first one, Warrior of Mars. And then uh, Red Men and Goddess of Mars. So those are the original books from 1950. And basically, when I bought these, uh, I, I realized that this is a, this is a Mars, this is a, a kind of a John Russell Fern, who was the uh, author very popular and prominent uh, science fiction author, mostly in Great Britain, but had been published uh, often in the United States and Amazing Stories and many other places. But these books were never published in the United States. And they're his version of John Carter of Mars, Edgar Rice Burroughs' hero. So these four books formed the Mars Quartet, which um, in about 1993 or 1994, I bought from uh, John White and I, and I and I just like became, uh, I loved them. I, I read them and enjoyed them. And I said, these are, these are just great. But I didn't know anything about them. So thereby runs the tale of, um, I got in touch with master uh, British science fiction collector, reader, scholar, uh, and later to be even a uh, publisher and editor in his own right, uh, Philip Harbottle in, uh, in England. And Phil, who's a great guy, did articles for me in Paperback Parade on many subjects. Um, I asked him if he could write an article on this series, because I didn't really know anything about it. Uh, but I really liked them a lot. And um, I thought, you know, it'd be an interesting, uh, interesting, uh, interesting series to, to highlight in Paperback Parade that nobody had ever heard of these. And these, these books are pretty rare. And these are in nice condition. And they're really rare and nice condition. So... I, uh, Phil, of course, wrote a that terrific article, and uh, it was a wonderful article, and, and I got to thinking, it got my, got my, uh, you know, the gears turning in my head. <clears throat> That's a symbol for something else, too, but we'll, we'll leave that alone. That, yeah, you think mm -hmm. so, huh? You know, there's that voice that comes out of the ether. Uh, anyway, regardless, thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. Um... So I started thinking about it, and I says, you know, Phil. Phil reminded me. He says, you know, he was he was the agent for the for John Russell Fern, uh, uh, you know, uh, publishing uh, books uh, by Fern. So he said, you know, if I wanted to, you know, re reprint them, you know, probably could do that. And uh, so we made a, a arrangement, and um, I, I was really really excited to do these books. Uh, I figured I'd do all four at once, and uh, Phil uh, and me worked out the contract and got everything arranged, and he even got 
um, Ron Turner um, to do the cover art. Ron Turner is a ter was a terrific, terrific cover artist for uh, British science fiction, uh, mushroom publishers in the 50s and 60s, also comic books. He did a lot of uh, uh, really great uh, art and cover art. So um, Phil was able to commission Ron Turner to do four new covers of the of the uh, Clay Drew Mars series. And those were the four first four books in the what would later become the Gryphon Books Science Fiction Rediscovery series. And the first four books, so I'm going to put these on the side for a minute. And the first book was, was Emperor of Mars. And this is with the new Ron Turner cover. And it's the Clay Drew series number one. It has the Gryphon Books logo. And it doesn't say anything about the Rediscovery series yet because we were just starting out and wanted to see how things went. And the books all have dust jackets. What they did was, what I did was, um, I, I used the uh, original 1950s cover uh, on the inside, and then we used the new color dust jacket uh, art as a dust jacket. The thing was, in 1995, when these books were printed, the... Uh, the printers that I worked with, they were short run printers and, and, and um, basically Xerox houses and kind of things. Uh, I was, these, these books were never printed in large scale. They were printed at 100, 100 copies at a time. In some cases, there's less than 50 copies of some of these books that even exist. And um, the first Mars, the first four Mars books were printed in 100 copies or so. And then uh, I would, uh, you know, reprint them. So they were, uh, no more than 500 copies was the was the contract for these, so there's very few less than that. But the the printing process at the time I couldn't I was not able to use uh, a cardstock color, um, uh, co you know, uh, laminated cover uh, to use color. So the process would have been much too expensive. But I tried to figure out a way around it. I had to do something, and I figured out a way with dust jackets on paperbacks. Because dust jacketed paperbacks in the vintage paperback field are very collectible and very, um, are, are, are very uh, rare actually and, and, and unique. And I figured out a way of doing it this way. So this was the first book in the series. And again, it's got some of the artwork. Phil did introductions for the, for the book, in each of the books. In fact, many of the books Phil did introductions for, and then the back cover. So this is the first book in the Clay Drew Mars series. This is number two. Another outstanding piece of art by Ron Turner. Number three. So I could show you the, I could compare the covers. So the Warriors, Warriors of Mars, you can see. The original book with the original cover and then the, the Gryphon book. And then the next one is number three, Red Men of Mars. And here's the original. So underneath the dust jacket, the original cover art is re, uh, reproduced on the uh, cover of the, of the book uh, in black and white. Because I couldn't, could not afford color. Uh, it was just so prohibitive, prohibitively expensive in those days. It was incredible, the, the, the cost. And the last book in the Clay Drew series, number four, Goddess of Mars. And here's that color to compare. I mean, the thing is, the original covers are just terrific, wonderful 1950 uh, pulp science fiction. And the new covers are just terrific, great, um, later on, uh, you know, 1990s uh, science fiction by a master artist, Ron Turner. Uh, in either case, they're just terrific covers, they're terrific covers and terrific books. And even these books have become very, very scarce. This was in 1995. Uh, at that time, I was doing a... Uh, 
a um, special presentation at the Brooklyn Public Library here. And um, um, Phil uh, and, and had uh, taken, taken a trip to New York. Uh, we went to see the, to the library and to see the exhibit. Uh, we met Chris Eckhoff. We had a nice day together. And I was able to bring him to my house to show him the first four of these books that came out uh, and present him with copies of the books. And uh, I was so proud to show him these books. Uh, I loved that we were able to do them. I think they came out beautiful. They're terrific to read and, and, and collect and enjoy. And he was very happy uh, uh, with, uh, with seeing these books published. And um, we, we had a mutual love of, our, uh, of science fiction. And uh, we really uh, hit it off really well. Phil is, to this day, a great friend and, and a great uh, fellow science fiction collector, a scholar whose um, who's amount of work in the field um, and in publishing, writing, editing is uh, quite astounding. I mean, he is really somebody who has contributed a massive amount of work and uh, energy and, and great information to the science fiction world, uh, especially British uh, 40s, 50s, 60s uh, science fiction, but also uh, all British publishing, because he's involved with many of the authors and artists um, uh, of that era, and he represented many of them. And um, through him, I was able to publish some of their works, and you'll see some of them appear in this Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series. So these are the first four books. And then we published a new book by E.C. Tubb. And this is a long lost classic. Um, This was in 1996, the next year, and it was, it was published in a trade paperback, again, um, again with a, with a uh, dust wrapper, but it was also published in hardcover. I don't have the hard, I have the hardcover somewhere, but I couldn't find it, but this this the same, uh, the same uh, cover art, it's just the hardcover is a, a limited signed edition that was signed by E.C. Tubb by Ron Turner and by Phil Harbottle. And there's some other books in the series, the Gryphon Rediscovery series, that were signed trade paperbacks by the author artist and by the editor. Uh, in some cases it was, most cases it was Phil, sometimes I was, uh, I also signed some of them. Um, so that was a, a, a brand new book in the series. And it wasn't yet, yet a series, but it was a science fiction series that we were kind of feeling our way through. The next book in the series would be, would prove to be like uh, really a, a key book. And it was The Golden Amazon by John Russell Fern. And um, you can see how the covers were different in those days, those early books. But we put the dust jacket on and it looked terrific. The Golden Amazon is a story of Violet Ray, who uh, it starts off as a kind of a crime mystery novel. She's uh, it's in the future. She's uh, in a spaceship with her parents. They're uh, attacked by a uh, by criminals and uh, the spaceship crashes and she's and she ends up crash landing on Venus and she's brought up by the Venusians and she becomes a golden Amazon golden skinned warrior woman uh, of great strength and power and ability and she grows up and she decides to fight criminals and evil uh, and her, her story is a terrific uh, action adventure pulp uh, stories that have to do with the superwoman of, of, of great strength and intelligence and super science. And she roams the galaxy co co correcting evil and fighting villains, and it's just terrific, terrific fun. Very, very rare uh, 
the, the publishing of the Golden Amazon books uh, is uh, is kind of um, very uh, very difficult to uh, to uh, figure out because there's um, it was published in by World's Works, a few of the early books in hardcover. Then they were published in the Toronto Star Weekly and newspapers uh, for the later books in the series. Fern wrote 26 books in the Golden Amazon series, and I published all 26 of them in the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series, plus some others, which I'll get to later. So this was the first time the whole series had been put together in uniform uh, size, beautiful editions. And you can see the first when we started off, I, I, I did the Golden Amazon. And then very soon afterwards, we added uh, the Gryphon logo, but then we added the Golden Amazon logo. Because I said, I decided we we're going to publish the whole series, and Phil and me both agreed that this would be a, a, a great idea to do that. And he, it was a dream of his to see the whole series published in a uniform, beautiful editions, and, and myself too. So I figured, okay, so let's do, let's go to it, and we're gonna, I'm going to do it. So we're going to publish the whole series. So from, the, from that first book, the... Um, We, 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 I, I printed up a few, I guess maybe 100 or so, 50 or so, and then in the next batch of 50, we had the logo on it. And from, sen from then on, all the books had the uh, Golden Amazon logo. So there's series within the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series, but still at this time it wasn't called that. The next book we published was... Saturn Patrol by E.C. Tubb. This was published in a signed numbered edition, and this was a reprint of the first E.C. Tubb science fiction novel from about 1950 or 51. So this is E.C. Tubb's first book. It was under the name King Lang, and um, this was a signed edition. This is number six in the Rediscovery series. Number seven, at the same time, we published another E.C. Tubb book, Temple of Death. Now, this had never been published before. This was the first publication, and this was also done in a signed limited edition, number uh, limited edition. Um, again, with Ron Turner cover art. I think that says eight. Yeah, there's, so what happens, these were, there were, both of these books, it was a signed edition of, of 10 copies. Uh, and then uh, the rest of the, uh, the rest of the uh, books were not signed, but just these, these 10. So this is number one to 10, one to 10. So <clears throat> we're just, um, we were just getting kind of started. I'm trying to find when the first science fiction rediscovery series, probably number 11, okay. So, so that was... Uh, that Look was, on the spine, it shows the numbers on the book. Oh, you have the numbers, okay. So this is number eight. So the numbers on, on the, uh, of this, on this, in the rediscovery series uh, appear later on on the spine. And, it's, and also the um, Golden Amazon series. I'll show you that. The next book is number nine, which is Calgon the Golden. Another book by E.C. Tubb. And number 10, <coughs> excuse me, is Aftermath by John Russell Fern. An after the world kind of uh, apocalyptic science fiction novel. With number 11, which is number 11 in the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series, we return with the, with the Golden Amazon, the second book in the series. So this is second book in the series, The Golden Amazon Returns by John Russell Fern. Again, this has the new logo with Golden Amazon number two. It's uh, listed on the spine, GA number two. And on the back cover, Golden Amazon series number two, and now 
It's the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery Series number 11. So this is number 11 in the series. And we had illustrations throughout the books, black and white illustrations by Ron Turner. He did an outstanding cover. He did outstanding covers for many of these books. I mean, it's just amazing how beautiful they are. This is a series, if you're a science fiction collector, you'd love to have them. They're difficult to find, all of these. And what happened in, uh, I guess, was it 2013 or 2014? 2012. 2012, Hurricane Sandy um, destroyed most of the uh, stock that I had on all of these books. Uh, I have a couple here, uh, here and there that have survived, and those are listed on eBay or ABE. And you can find probably some of these on eBay or ABE from other, other sellers. I did, uh, I, uh, I did, I, I sold these to book dealers at, at, during the, in the, in the 90s. Uh, uh, mail order book dealers like uh, Robert Weinberg, Chris Drum, uh, Dreamhaven, uh, Greg Ketter, and many other uh, places. Uh, they would just buy Actually, uh, m most of the, the dealers in those days, they would buy anything that I published, whatever, whatever it was, whatever genre, uh, because uh, the books were popular and people loved them. Uh, these sold for $15, which was a bit in those days, but you know now it's like kind of uh, very inexpensive, uh, but they're still scarce. So this is Golden Amazon number two, and we had 24 more to go, in which, which, which we did. Okay, so this is, this is the same book. The Golden Amazon Returns, also, there were some that had, didn't have the dust jackets. They had, I always use red end papers, usually. But this one has the cover, cover stock. So... At this time, we were trying to move away from dust jackets. Uh, I think this might have been a, a, re, a later reprint. Or I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but there are a few. Without the dust jackets, these are even more scarce. The next one was a really big book. This is number 12 in the, in the Science Fiction Rediscovery series. Um, it was The Return by E.C. Tubb. This is the 32nd book in the Doomerist saga. Uh, Doomerist was an uh, explorer, uh, sci adventurer in the science fiction future uh, that uh, E.C. Tubb created uh, 31 books. Uh, Dor Ace published them and then Dor published them. And then for some reason, Dor didn't want to publish Number 32, I think at that time, Don Walheim had passed away. His daughter or, or, or somebody had taken over the company and they didn't. They wanted to move away from kind of pulp uh, space opera, of which The Return, of which Doomerist is, is, is quintessential pulp space opera. Wonderful, fantastic science fiction at its best, most exciting. Uh, and they didn't want to publish it. So it kind of... Uh, it kind of sat around for a little while. It was published in France, in, in French, and that was the first printing. And then this was the first English uh, language edition of The Return by E.C. Tubb, Doomerous number 32. And uh, it was published in, uh, we published it in a trade paperback and in a, hard, a limited edi signed edition hardcover. And this is a very successful book, a very popular there's actually a 33rd book in the series that was found or that later came out, but uh, that I did not publish. That was many, many years later. So this is, uh, this is around 2000 and this is on 2000 and around 2000 and uh, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, about 1990, 1998. So, so this is, this was uh, actually a signed I don't, actually, it might not have been a hardcover. Oh cover. my goodness uh, gracious! It might. I, I had to confuse it with. Is this a one. senior moment? No, it's it's. It was it was a signed, uh, limited signed edition in trade paperback, 
of 100 copies and then the regular trade paperback. Okay, because some of these these early books I get confused on a little bit because uh, it's, you're going back like tw 25, 30 years, 30 years actually now. And it's like, you know, there's so many, 62 books in the series. So after, after Doomerist, after the return by Tub, we went back to number three in Golden Amazon. Golden Amazon's Triumph. That was number three. And number 13 in the series. Number 14 in the series was I Fight for Mars by E.C. Tubb. Terrific space opera. And this is one of the little bit of a beat up copy, but this is the original 1950s milestone under Charles Gray, you see tub. So that was I Fight for Mars. Next book in the series, number 15. Is there, and you'll see also now here it's the Science Fiction Rediscovery series, number 14. <coughs> Excuse me. And number 15 is Alien Life by E.C. Tubb. I love this cover. It's a beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, can you get the, the pull the wire out? What wire? Oh. In here. You can keep talking. They'll hear you. I can keep talking? All right. Just focus on the books and I'll get... Where's the wire? Hold the camera. Don't shut it off. And talk about All the right. book. Well, my wife. I'm lose power, though. My battery's yeah, the battery's running low because I'm I'm really jabbering along about everything. I'm trying to remember a lot of the things that Phil and I did when we put these books together, and it's been a long time. It's a long time ago, and uh, a lot of waters uh, flowed under the bridge. But um, it was a really exciting time. I mean, we were doing these books. I was publishing them. Uh, Probably, uh, probably five or six a year, sometimes eight. And, uh, you know, along with many other books, Hard Boiled Crime, Sherlock Holmes, and other things. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Sorry about that. He kicked the wire. I kicked the wire. Okay. So now I'm going to move these out of the way. We're going to... We're going to. The next one is uh, number four in the Golden Amazon series, is Amaz the Amazon's Diamond Quest, and this is number sixteen in the Science Fiction Rediscovery series. Number seventeen is the Fortress of Utopia, and this is from nineteen ninety eight. This is by this is the first book that we did by Jack Williamson. We did quite a few Jack Williamson books. Um, this is from 1998. This was uh, printed in a, uh, again, in a 100 copy signed and numbered edition, signed by Jack uh, Williamson, um, Ron Turner, the cover artist, and Phil Harbottle, the editor. And I got in touch with, with Jack, who, who was, at 1998, he was still alive. He was in his 90s and um, living in Arizona, I believe, or New Mexico. And it was just great to be in touch with him. He's such a legendary science fiction writer and such a wonderful gentleman. And uh, I asked him, I said, could we reprint some of your, can I reprint some of your stories from the pulps? And he told me, he says, well, I have these ones, different ones that have never been printed before in book form. So I published a bunch of his work, also E.C. Tubb, uh, in the Gryphon uh, Double Series, which is a, a separate series that I did Gryphon doubles like the old ace doubles. And that, that really has nothing to do with, with what we're talking about today, but except that there's some Jack Williamson uh, novelettes that were published in those. But this was like a, a full novel, Fortress of Utopia. And um, it's great, great to have this classic, lost classic, first book publication uh, of uh, this Jack Williamson science fiction classic. And this started again uh, some more Jack Williamson books that we would we would be publishing, but before that we had to continue the science fiction rediscovery series, and while not really uh, with number eighteen and nineteen, and while not really 
science fiction, because these are two books that John Russell Fern wrote uh, that were basically as um, kind of a Tarzan imitator. So you see the, the, the series started off with the four Clay Drew books, books that uh, Fern wrote uh, that were uh, imitations of John, or Burroughs' John Carter of Mars. Here we have, he's imitating Burroughs a little bit again with uh, the gold of Akata and, and Johnny the Mighty. And these are in the Science Fiction Rediscovery series, but they're also in their kind of their own little mini series um, of um, jungle novel. Ju jungle novel number one and two. And he wrote these as Earl Titan, and this is the first uh, publication of these books under Fern's original name, and uh, first publication of them in I don't know how many, sixty years maybe, uh, and they're Tarzan. Edgar Rice Burroughs Tarzan imitations, uh, which are pretty good, pretty good, and a lot of fun. So those were the two books in that little mini series within the overall series. Then we go back to number 20, and it's The Amazon Strikes Again, book number five. Unbelievably, these, the cover art on these books is striking. I, could, I, uh, I, I think Phil owns some of the paintings. Uh, I have uh, one, I have one painting that um, that Ron did for me for uh, my novel Hellbent on Homicide, crime novel, and I can just imagine what these look like original, the paintings that, that Ron Turner did for for some of these books. I mean, they are just incredible. They're just gorgeous. So we we continued with the Amazon. This is Amazon number six, twin of the Amazon, and. The series is moving along really well. She's dealing with uh, super science, super uh, villains, aliens, not only in the, in, the, um, in the solar system, but now it's starting to go into throughout the galaxy, a wider uh, expanse of, uh, of stories that really touch on a lot of great subjects and ideas. And uh, Fern really had his imagination he let it loose and go wild with uh, all kinds of terrific uh, stories. So this is the sixth book in the series. The seventh book is Conquest of the Amazon. And then the 23rd book in the series is a Gryphon graphic novel, number one, The, the Golden Amazon. So this was a, uh, actually, Ron Turner uh, did a Golden Amazon comic book, uh, and uh, also Nick Hazard, uh, kind of an interstellar secret agent. And um, these were published in England in a small press uh, publication, I believe maybe Phil Harbottle published them himself, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but we collected them all into this the Golden Amazon in Gryphon Graphic novel number one, and this was that the results of that. And this is all comic book uh, insides of comic book art by Ron Turner. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, the next issue, the next book in the series was uh, number 24. So we had, we did a graphic novel in the series, and I said, it's like, you know, I always liked the Avon fantasy readers. And I thought, why don't we do like a Gryphon science fiction and fantasy reader? And so that's what we did. Number, book number, book number 24 in the series was a Gryphon science fiction and fantasy reader. It was an anthology of stories by different authors. E.C. Tubb, E.R. James, Philip E. High, Sidney Bounds, John Russell Fern and, and others, and also uh, Richard Lupoff and Jack Williamson. So there's, there's many people in this, in this book. Again, it's a dust jacketed, dust jacketed paperback. And here, in this case, we had, uh, there, there was no cover, so I, we use the, the, the cover here in black and white on the red card stock and 
science fiction fantasy reader with, again, the Gryphon logo. It's from 1999, I think. Is that 99? Hard to read upside down. And then the contents of all the different authors in here. And it was a, it was a really nice book. Um, it's harder to do, like, uh, anthologies and, uh, and uh, you know, magazine kind of things than it is doing a single one volume of one story. The next book was something really special. Uh, another author that I got in touch with was Don Wilcox, who was uh, who written a lot of science fiction for Amazing Stories for Ray Palmer uh, and, uh, and and Howard Brown. And uh, one of his most famous stories was The Whispering Gorilla. So we published that, got in touch with Don, and I made arrangements, and we published that in this book, The Whispering Gorilla, by Don Wilcox. And um, um, Ron Turner cover again. So this is an amazing story about a uh, scientist who transplants uh, the hero's brain in, into a, a, a giant ape. And uh, it's kind of science fiction horror. But um, the interesting thing about it is that there was a reprint, uh, not a reprint, a, a sequel the Return of the Whispering Gorilla by David V. Reed. This is the uh, World Fantasy Classic cover for that book uh, that was reprinted in England uh, from the pulps. So what we did was we combined both books together. And uh, you have the, the whole story, Wilcox's first story of the Whispering Gorilla and then David Reed's Return of the Whispering Gorilla. And uh, this was also done in a signed edition and a trade paperback edition. Signed by Don Wilcox and uh, Ron Turner and Phil Horbottle. Next book, a couple of books in the series, with number 26 and 27, were two classic by E.C. Tubb, The Wall, and Earth Set Free. Two more classics in that series, in that by that author. Number 29 was a really cool horror book by uh, John Russell Fern, and that's The Slitherers. There's a picture of John Russell Fern. We went back to Jack Williamson, and um, There were two uh, short novels that um, Jack had written for, uh, for the Pulps and that had never been published in book form up to that point. So we put them together and uh, book number 29 is The Ruler of Fate and Zandulu. And this is this cover Ta uh, Ron Turner did in the, in the it's kind of in the design of uh, that pulp, to the two uh, two science fiction novels, or, or there was a pulp that, that used the same kind of design. They used a diagonal uh, a lightning bolt, lightning bolt to separate, and then you'd have the the one one title with the with art from that title, and then the next the title with 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 cover show, cover art showing that that book. So this is how he did that. And it's a really nice idea, it really worked good. So this is um, Jack Williamson's The Ruler of Fate and Zandalu. We went back to the, for number 39, back to the, uh, number 30 actually. Uh, I can't read, my eyes are not so good. We went to the uh, Golden Amazon number eight, The Lord of Atlantis. And then we went back to E.C. Tubb for 31, with the Stellar Legion, one of my favorites. It's by E.C. Tubb, Stellar Legion. Let's see what the back cover, back covers of these. Next, next couple are uh, two Golden Amazon books. Uh, number nine is, this is uh, Golden Amazon number nine, The Triangle of Power. And number 10 is the Amethyst City. And 
by then we were using, uh, we're not doing the dust jackets on some of these, but we're doing the, um, we're doing regular cardstock covers, like regular books, like real books. So those are the two, number nine and 10 in the Golden Amazon series. Next book, Another, actually, the next two books are two more Jack Williamson books. And uh, this is uh, The Stone from the Green Star. And it's a lost classic. First book publication that Jack Williamson. This is the, one of the pulp uh, illustrations of the first book edition. Jack Williamson. Did you send him copies of these books? Oh, sure, yes, yes. He was very happy. He loved them. And the next uh, Jack Williamson, first uh, edition of Two Lost Classics um, from Astounding Stories, first world book edition, is The Blue Spot and Entropy Reversed. That's also uh, one of the illustrations from Astounding. So he published a lot of these novellas and novelettes uh, that had never been reprinted up to this time in book form. And these were the first book editions of these, of these uh, long stories. Then we come back to the Golden Amazon, uh, the daughter of the Golden Amazon. Violet Ray has a daughter. And the, class, the, 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 the um, adventure continues. This is uh, number 11, the daughter of the Golden Amazon. And number 12, Quorn, Quorn returns. Q-U-O-R-N-E, Quorn. And it's the first publication, first book publication. Okay, yesterday when we were going crazy with finding these books, yeah, they it asked you us a about long time the numbers, to find these. and I was like, what the heck, why couldn't you keep the numbers, and you said you're going to explain it. That, well, you still haven't explained it. Why are, why couldn't you do like the 26 in order and keep the books 1 to 26? Because they were, they were it was all, the science fiction books were all published together in, in a, uh, in, in an overall series. So in within the 62 books of the Science Fiction Rediscovery series, there was the Amazon books, 26 books, plus a few others. There was the dinosaur books, there's the four Clay Drew books, and there's, there's a couple other things that were, that were separate. But they were all overarching into that one whole series. But didn't you start with the Golden Amazon? No, I started with the four Clay Drew books, the, the Mars books. That's that's what started it, but see, it wasn't it wasn't like I I, I did the, the the Clay Drew books and said we're well, we're going to do a science fiction rediscovery series. It was I did those four books and then I said, okay, so now what else am I going to do? And then Phil suggested, well, why don't you we could do something here or we could do this? And I says, okay, I'll do that. Then eventually it, it kind of grew into it. I think he suggested the science fiction rediscovery series. So you assign those name. numbers retroactively to books that didn't have numbers. The, it wasn't retroactive. It was the books that the first books that came out were the first books in the series, even though they weren't numbered. And then, uh, as you know, soon after around uh, eleven or twelve, uh, the books were all numbered in the science fiction rediscovery series. But the first, uh, the first ten, it was. Uh, it was, uh, they, they weren't numbered specifically, but, you know, they were, uh, they were later numbered as, 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 as uh, according to publication date when they came out. So they were in the order of when they came out, which is the order that, that, you know, they were published. So that's how we, that's how I, I figured it out. It really, it wasn't planned that we were going to, I was going to do, if I would have sat down in 1995 with Phil and we would have said, you know, let's do a 62 book uh, science fiction rediscovery series. He would have said, oh, yeah, yeah, cheers, mate. That's a great idea. Uh, and I always said, we'll do all 62. We'll do 26 of that Golden Amazon books, all 26. Plus, we're going to do a few others. Plus, we're going to do a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll get in touch with Jack Williamson. Uh, 
uh, you know, who I didn't even know at the time. And I got in touch with him. And I'll get in touch with Don Wilcox, who I did not even know was alive at the time. And we'll, we do all of these books. It, it, it didn't happen like that. There was no plan. It was just, it was kind of just as we went along, it, it went that way. And uh, the thing is that I, it doesn't matter because uh, I'm just so happy and privileged that we were able to publish these books. I was able to publish these books. You have no idea uh, how it was. It's always easy to work with Phil, but working with printers and binders and um, uh, the mail system and all of that, such incredible hardship, hard work, uh, stress. You know, it was just crazy, crazy. But I mean, look at the results. The books are so beautiful. They are so beautiful. Such a wonderful series. And uh, I, I'm so proud and so happy uh, of, of this series. And all the books that I did is Rife and Books. But uh, this, this is what series we're talking about now. We've got a, quite a few more to look at. So I'm going to go and do two more of the uh, Golden Amazon books. Number 13 is The Central Intelligence. And number 14 is the Cosmic Crusaders. And the back covers has some art. And there's some art inside each book. Ron Turner art. And number 15 of the Golden Amazon books, which is this is number 40 of the Science Fiction Rediscovery series, is Parasite Planet. So I'm going to move these out of the way now, and we're going to go to number 41 in the, in the Science Fiction Rediscovery series. This is John Russell Fern's Dinosaur series. There were two books in that series, and the first one is A Thing of the Past. And this is the original book of that from, the, from around 1952. This is from probably 1999 or 2000. He published this under the Volstead grid band byline, but it was John Russell Fern. And this was the first book in the Dinosaur series. And the second book, this is the sequel, is The Genial Dinosaur. And the next book, Gold on Amazon number 16, World Out of Step. <clears throat> Two more Golden Amazon series. Uh, number 17, The Shadow People. And number 18, Kingpin Planet. Many of these later Golden Amazon books never appeared in book form before. So this is the first book edition, uh, world book edition. They did appear sometimes, like I said in, earlier, in the uh, Toronto Star Weekly, in newspaper supplements, uh, and, and, and also in the Philadelphia, a couple of newspapers in, uh, around the country, but um, never in book form. So these are the first book editions. Um, next ones are World in Reverse, Golden Amazon number 19, and Dwellers in Darkness. Golden Amazon number 20. Next one is uh, De Bracy's. This is number uh, number 48 in this Amazon, uh, the uh, Rediscovery series. De Bracy's Drug by E.C. Tubb. This is not a Ron Turner cover. Uh, and this was a famous, uh, this is a famous 50s uh, 50s pulp science fiction paperback, which is kind of scarce. I have it, but I couldn't find it. I was looking for it because I wanted to show you, but believe me, it was hard to find all this stuff and, and, and get it all in order and, and, and to remember everything. I mean, there's so many things I want to say about, you know, when we did, when we, we did these books, uh, Phil and I. Um, it was just a, it was a joyful time, though, to do these, to be able to do these. Number 50 is Dark Centauri by John Glasby. This is the first book by John Glasby that we published. Classic science fiction from the 50s. 
Next are two more Golden Amazon books. Number 21, World in Duplicate. And number 22, Lords of Creation. So again, like uh, some, some of these books were published in newspaper. Uh, they were never published in book form. Uh, they were published in newspaper supplements. Uh, but then some of these, like Lords of Creation, were never published ever. Some of these were found in uh, Fern's papers, uh, books that he had written and uh, hadn't been published. So uh, this is a first publication anywhere for some of these. Um, again, same thing with uh, number 23, Duel with Colossus, first publication anywhere. And number 24, Stand Still Planet. Number 25 is uh, Ghost World, Golden Amazon, number 25, first publication anywhere. And the last book by Fern in the Golden Amazon series, number 26, Earth Divided. So that's all 26 books in the Golden Amazon series that were part of the science fiction, Rife and Science Fiction Rediscovery series. From that point on, we published number 27, Chameleon Planet. This was a book, first book publication by John Russell Fern and Philip Harbottle. What Phil did was, uh, I believe that uh, Fern uh, outlined this book or wrote part of it and then Phil completed it uh, from, uh, from Fern's papers and notes. So this, this novel uh, it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration between Fern and Harbottle, and it's number 27 in the series. And the next book was uh, The Golden Amazon on Venus. This is number 58 in the Rediscovery series. This is four, I believe this is four novelettes of the Golden Amazon. So at this point, with number 27, the Golden Amazon series by Fern is, is, and, and Horbottle is done. These were stories that were collected of the Golden Amazon. So then what happened is that uh, uh, Phil had uh, under, under contract, he represented uh, John Glaspie, who was a, a, a famous science fiction writer of the 50s and 60s. And he was a contemporary of Fern. He was very familiar with the Golden Amazon series and Fern's work. And so he contra uh, Phil contracted John Glaspie to continue the Golden Amazon series and to write new novels in that series uh, based on the characters. And he did. He wrote some really stunning, beautiful, terrific books. These are first publication, first book edition. And this is number 28 in the Golden Amazon series, C.T. Sun. John continued with uh, book number 29, The Crimson Peril. He continued with number 30, The Sun Movers. And then the last book in the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series, number 62, and the last book that John Glaspie did for the Golden Amazon for Gryphon Books is number 31, The Primordial World. The back cover. This Primordial World was done in a numbered limited edition of 100 copies only. And that's basically the story of the Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery series. I'm sure I've left out a lot. Um, and I want to thank Phil Harbottle for all his assistance in helping me to create this series. And uh, we, we both had a dream together that we uh, would do these books and uh, we accomplished that. And that was, it was uh, stunning results, really. You should also look at Phil's YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel 
uh, um, 50s British science fiction, and uh, you'll you'll see some terrific, uh, very incisive um, uh, material, and, and and also books, rare a lot of rare uh, 50s uh, British science fiction. And also, uh, which is which is his heart is in British science fiction and science fiction in general, and you'll you'll get an education in uh, classic science fiction and and in be in beautiful artwork that was done for the for these books that uh, a lot of rare books you never see today and you didn't you wouldn't know about uh, it, unless they were done uh, in YouTube uh, videos by people like Phil Harbottle and. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else I should add in. Uh, Are there any other books not published that you were supposed to in this series that you... I, I think there might have been... Uh, I think there might be since... Well, since uh, since 2014, this was the last book in the series. It came out in 2014. And since then, I don't have the rights to them. Phil has, has the rights. And he's he's had them published by other publishers. I think Wildside Press or whatever has has or, or other publishers have um, have reprinted the books, but uh, mine were the first ones, and it's it's a really beautiful uniform set uh, of uh, of I think pretty rare books because uh, we did not publish. I did not print up a lot of these, a uh, hundred two hundred copies, uh, and. Um, a lot of them were lost. My, my inventory was lost in Hurricane Sandy when we had the flood here uh, throughout Brooklyn, and um, so a lot of a lot of books were lost. And um, like I say, it's uh, it, anybody seeking to collect these books, uh, it, it might be a bit of a go, but I think it'd be worth it because there's some, some really of the nice. Later ones, right? in, in I, have a, I have a few of the later ones here and there that that, that survived. And uh, and some of them are on eBay, and some of them are on ABE if you're looking for them. Um, but I say there's there's new editions also, and uh, uh, the Golden Amazon is a really good series, really good, uh, exciting books to read, and all of these EC Tub, uh, John Russell Fern, Jack Williamson books, uh, terrific, terrific stuff. Uh, some of it hasn't been reprinted in 50, 60 years, and some of these, a lot of these books that I did were uh, first American editions or first book editions or, or first edition, you know, in any form. So uh, they're, they're, quite, they're quite rare, and with the print run, uh, they are quite rare, I think, today, and, and probably will be, uh, become more so. But I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because of love of publishing. I love the, the stories. I love the cover artwork. Every time I would go to the printer and bring back uh, a, a new book, you know, I, it, there would be always like this cringy kind of thing because like the printers, printers always screw up somehow. I don't know why. They 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 usually screw up, and if they and, and I'd have to bring the book back and have them redo it if if there was uh, problems. I mean, they would print stuff. They print the pages upside down and do things backwards and all kinds of things, but um. So there was that I was always, you know, worried and careful looking through every book to make sure everything was right, done correctly, and if not, I'd have them fix it. But most of the time, you know, it was it was just such a happy event. I, I'd bring the books home, I'd look through them. I put and the dust jackets, all the books that had the dust jackets, I put all those dust jackets on by hand. I measured and folded the dust jackets, trimmed them so that they fit. So um, I was very personally involved with not only all the books, but each individual uh, book itself to, to, to publish it. And I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of what I accomplished. Uh, and uh, I hope I hope you enjoy these books as much as I have. And um, just wanted to share this with you. And Gryphon Science Fiction Rediscovery Series, 62 books from 1995 to 2014, almost 20 years of science fiction publishing. And uh, hope you enjoyed this little look at it. And give us a thumb up and a like. See you next time.